Once again, back here with my father-in-law, Jim Albers, and we're talking a little more shuttle stuff. And this is the vertical motion simulator they used uh, to uh, work on the shuttle simulation. And Jim, you got a chance to fly that simulator, huh? Right. Anyway, yeah, the vertical motion simulator was the, the only simulator within the world that we could use to actually simulate the flight path of the shuttle that comes in like a 20 degree glide slope, which is much steeper than a normal airplane. And this simulator was used to, to actually test all, all astronauts that were going to fly the shuttle, either currently fly or fly it in the future, had to be trained on this simulator. And this was at Ames Research Center. And when I was there from like 82 to, well, 97, uh, in the early 80s, all through the 80s, we had like 90 astronauts. And it took six months to go through all the astronauts in terms of the training. And so one of the engineers, one of our test engineers that worked for me says, well, Jim, why don't you, uh, we have some time here in between astronauts. Would you like to fly this vehicle? And I said, absolutely. So they took me in there and they gave me, you know, kind of checked me out. And they said, we're going to give you uh, a really good program. What they did, they simulated tires blown, high turbulence, big winds, I mean, just about every, they threw everything at me they could as far as flying this thing. And I think I did crash it one, one or two times because it was, you know, it was so uh, stringent in terms of flight requirements. But this is a, to give me a feeling for what they would put the astronauts to because they wanted to simulate any kind of potential accident. I mean, uh, a high stress environment that the shuttle could withstand, you know, during the, the, the landing phase of the aircraft. And so, and then they tried to do one that was much calmer after this. Said, well, let, give, give it, we'll give you a normal shuttle landing environment, and what a difference. But they just did it for, for fun to try to give me, you know, try to, to shake see if you I up. could even handle it. And of course, I didn't have opportunity to fly other simulators there, but this is the first time I flying the shuttle. But the shuttle was so much different than a normal airplane that it was really uh, quite an experience. Now, yeah. when is the engagement as far as your controllability? What altitude? Like, are you coming in right through burn and then oh, no, picking up the lower, airplane? Or are you, you're, are you? Uh, say 10,000 feet or something. Oh, okay. You know, so then, it's, you're, 10, you're already on your approach. Yeah, you're approach. on the glide path yeah. for landing. And that's where you're actually coming down to close to 20 degree glide slope. So the final phase of that, that's the only simulator that could handle, and then, and then both the, the, the visual cues and also the sound cues were almost identical to, to the actual shuttle. So it was extremely valuable for the astronauts. I mean, without that, they would have an extreme difficulty actually flying the airplane. And you're, so you're hearing just basically right. wind velocity across the surface oh, yeah, there? You, yeah. Both and they're able to simulate the noise that noise and the visual cues at that time. This computer generated imagery that was used for your visual environment coming in at Edwards. They could also simulate other fields, you know, coming in from Florida if they wanted to. You know, what I'm saying they would simulate different environments yeah, as far as landing fields with computer generated imagery, and then they would simulate whatever was happening externally, either wind environments or blown tire or anything like that that could happen uh, where the pilots had to see if they could handle, you know. Now those, like now those shuttle had no, no rocket propellant whatsoever remaining in the, in the no. engines whatsoever if for some no. kind of an emergency burn or something. No. You're, you're a hundred percent glider. Right. That's it. Yeah, pretty well, much you don't make it on well, the runway. You didn't. Slope, I mean, that's got to be pretty. Time they landed, pretty. <laughs> you know, it was over 100 miles an hour. Obviously, I mean, you know, a lot more. So the descent rates, uh, several, you know, a lot right. of a lot. Right. A lot. Yeah. So that was it. Was kind of interesting and an experience for me to be able to fly into space shuttle. Did you and grease it, or did you bounce it? Uh, I probably bounced it. <laughs> right. Yeah, so what, what was unique about it, then years later, uh, I was had the opportunity to, you know, manage some of the space shuttle operations funding for the, the space centers, and so I could relate better to that program by having actually flown this 
landed the shuttle in a simulator, which is extremely valuable for a manager. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Jim. Thank <laughs> you.